I'm Kirsty Deets. I'm the Head of Collections here at Manx National Heritage. First of all, I'd like to welcome Dr Taylor to the exhibition and to thank him and his team for allowing us to borrow uh, so many fantastic clocks from his collection. And my first question for you is, when did you first become interested in horology? Ooh, long time ago. Um, let me think. I was in Canada during the war as an evacuee, and so that I uh, missed my father from um, 1940 to 1945, and I came back to England in 1945, just as the war was beginning to finish, in a convoy in which five ships were sunk. And so I was really meeting my father for the first time as a, a young child rather than as an infant. And uh, he could do anything. And I thought all fathers were like this, obviously. And he used to uh, be put on, if you like, by friends and relations who used to say, well, I've got this grandfather clock and it, it stopped working and I can't get anybody to fix it. Would you fix it for me, Eric? And he'd bring this clock home and then put a, a sheet on the kitchen table and uh, get all uh, egg cups and so on in a line. And then he'd take all the bits and put them in. And uh, he'd show me how the, the oil had congealed and anything which was really heavily covered in oil, because it'd been oiled too much, um, he would then boil and uh, take the, the oil off, because of course there were no cleaners or anything just after the war. And then he'd polish everything up and then put a tiny, tiny spot of oil on, on the pivots, uh, put it all back together and it worked. And I thought it was just magic, magic, yes. So what does this exhibition, uh, The Luxury of Time, tell us? Well, I hope it uh, shows the development of clocks over uh, a 300 year period that we start off as you, you come into the exhibition there with the Gothic clock and that came from a collection which I was very very lucky to buy and it was all very early English clocks and yet there was this Gothic clock. I almost dismissed it until I took it apart and when I took it apart I was completely bowled over with the with the skill that in 1500 this had been made by a blacksmith on a big anvil with a big hammer and the side pieces of the, the four corners of the clock. When we'd taken it all, put them side by side, they were the same to within a quarter of a millimetre. And the whole thing then is like an IKEA kit. Now it shares a case with a John Harrison long case clock. And I know that's one of your favorite pieces. So can you tell us a bit more about John Harrison and his claim to fame? Well, certainly he changed the world. And he was a carpenter and he started off uh, wanting to get married. And being a carpenter, he was wondering what to do. And he decided he'd make um, a long case grandfather clock. He used um, well-seasoned quarter-sawn oak, which wouldn't move and degrade. And so he made not only the frame to hold the, all the mechanism, but um, all the, the wheels were also made out of wood. And it was just an ordinary grandfather clock made in wood. Except when you wanted to wind it, you, you took out, most clocks have winding holes, these had the, you took the spandrels off and put the key in and then wound it and then put the spandrel back so that um, it had all sorts of interesting little features. Um, we have a sundial in this exhibition. Can you tell us a bit more about the significance of sundials and why somebody might have owned one as well as the fancy clocks and watches around us? In the, the 1600s, um, clocks were very rare that you would have a, uh, a town clock or a cathedral clock, uh, but to have a clock in your house was very rare. And so that when the, uh, the, behind you you've got the lantern clocks, 
which became available, well, of course, what did you set it by? Because if you were in a farm, you were a rich farmer, you'd had a lantern clock, but you wanted it right. And so you couldn't uh, dial up Tim and find out what the time was. <laughs> you couldn't listen to the pips on the radio. And so he had to find a, another way of, uh, of doing it. So anybody who came in um, to a clock shop to buy a clock, um, the, uh, uh, the clockmaker would say, well, of course, you'll need a sundown to set it by. Uh, would you like one this big or, or this big? Or, and then for three pounds extra, it's that big. <laughs> So thank you once again, Dr Taylor, for allowing us to borrow this wonderful collection of clocks and to show them for the first time together on the Isle of Man in public. Um, it's been a really great experience putting it together with you. Mm -hmm.